Stay tuned, everyone. We're about to begin the 2021 Smale GMC Virtual Auto Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2021 GMC Auto Show presented by Smale GMC in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Today, we will be connecting you directly to our showroom floor with a trained product specialist and a live cameraman. We will answer all your questions and perform live demonstrations on your favorite GMC vehicles. Without any further ado, let's start the broadcast with your hostess, Taylor Smale. everyone and welcome to the 2021 Smail GMC virtual auto show. My name's Taylor and I'm going to be coming along with you guys this afternoon as we check out all the cool and exciting things coming up in GMC this year. A quick reminder before we get started, don't forget to go ahead and like and share this video. We are live so we can answer all of your questions in real time and definitely want to make sure that we cater the show to what it is that you want to see. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our product specialists. We have Bill and Dan joining us. Hello. Oh, and we have sales manager Dylan. How are you guys doing? Oh, I think you guys I think we're muted. That's there right. we are. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. How about all you? Right. Thank you. Very good. good. Okay, we've all had lunch. We're all ready to roll. All we're right. Ready. Just a quick reminder for everyone at home, we are all in separate locations. We have an on-site videographer that's going to help us and walk us around the vehicle. So we're being very COVID safe and taking all the necessary precautions. Um, Dylan, I think we're going to talk with you in a little bit. Yes, Bill and Dan, what, um, what are you most excited about? Where should we start today? Well, I'm going to talk, talk about it segment that uh, kind of got lost for a little bit for a few years and i'm going to talk about the gmc canyon uh you're looking at a picture of it there which is the denali but what i wanted to hit a couple quick things with it is there are th before we get into the denali end of it uh which is gmc's top end of any of our vehicles so there is the gmc canyon denali the yukon denali sierra denali uh terrain and the acadia denali so it's the top of the line for all of our brand. Um, the Canyon does come in uh, two different bed sizes in the crew cab, which is a five foot and a six foot. It also comes in an extended cab. Um, there are three different engines you can get in that vehicle, which is the 2.5 four cylinder. You're not gonna see a lot of those. You're gonna see more of the 2.8 turbo diesel, and you're gonna see the, the, the biggest ones, the 3.6. Um, what's nice about the little turbo diesel now that, uh, that we're putting in these, it's a door max. It does have a little more torque than the V6. So your towing is going to be more around the 7,500 pounds for towing where the V6 is going to be around 7,000 miles in towing. Um, the V6 is 308 horsepower, but all around basically in the six cylinder and the, the, uh, turbo diesel you're going to be looking about 17 miles per gallon in the city and about 24 miles per gallon on the highway. So it's kind of nice to see this segment of the smaller trucks come back because I'm telling you, it's on fire. A lot of people, they just might not have the, the garage space maybe for the for the big Sierras per se. So they, they need something a little bit smaller or maybe they don't need the bigger truck, you know, because they don't tow with it, but maybe they want to get some stuff, um, gardening stuff, stone, mulch, that type of stuff. Hey, haul the occasional refrigerator for the in-laws or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, so now what we are going to hit on, though, is the Denali part. And right off the get go with the Denali, as you can see, one of the things that makes Don um, Denali unique to any of our products is that grill. So you can ask anybody going down the street or if you're sitting with somebody and they say, oh, there's a GMC. Oh, look, it's Denali. Typically, they know it because of that grill. Mm -hmm. As you go around, Brian, to the side, something else that's unique is the 19 inch diamond cut machined aluminum wheels. That's just for Denali. As you can see there, I mean, it's a sharp wheel and there's your Denali name brand. And you got your six, or I'm sorry, your five inch uh, steps to get up into the truck because it still sits a little higher. And um, as far as inside the truck, a couple of the nice things is um, the, uh, 
there you go, Brian. Yeah, I mean, if you want to jump to the front there, I'd appreciate it. Is the premium interior. So that's going to be a Denali. And if you, yeah, see the wood grain there? It's a four ash wood grain on the side, which is going to be just for the Denali's. Oh, I like that. Yes, it's very nice. And then as far as some safety features, well, Brian's shown you that. Um, it does have lane departure, which is really nice. So anytime you're going down the road and you go outside that lane a little bit, it's going to alert you, you know, hey, let's get back into your lane. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing is forward collision alert. And I'm going to hit on forward collision alert a little bit. And basically what it is, you'll be driving down the road and up in your driver information center, you'll see a little green truck or a little green car. And basically that's telling you that you have enough distance between you and the guy in front of you. Now, if that goes yellow, that means you're either starting to go up on to that person too quick and or maybe somebody's pulling out from the side and it's going to also alert you. But if you go up too fast or someone pulls out right in front of you up in the dashboard, it will send like a little red hologram up there to let you know that, you know, there's a possible collision. Um, so the safety features are really nice. It does have wireless charging in the Denali, oh, heated and cooled nice. seats, and right down the wireless. There you go. There's the wireless charging right behind the console or in front of the console. I apologize. And it does have the heated and cooled seats, like I said. So you know they did a really nice feature and put all the Denali stuff that they would have uh, had in in the regular Sierra into the Canyon. Um, they also have an HD camera now where a lot of the older trucks, when you looked in your rear view camera, when, or I'm sorry, not your rear view camera, but your backup camera, it was just basically analog. So we know when we look at an HD TV now, how nice it is and crisp it is, it's going to be the same in that also. But also with that, as you're backing up, if you are getting too close to something and maybe you're not paying attention, you're also going to get the beep and noise, um, with the ultrasonic rear park assist that you're getting too close to. So it's, it's some really good safety stuff in these trucks. Um, and then it does come standard Denali with the, um, the uh, spray and bed liner. I love those wood accents. It just brings make, it all together so nice. Stand out a little bit, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and something that, that I'm going to hit r real quick is, um, and something that GM's been big for for a lot of, lot of years, Brian's showing you the spray and bed liner now, but is stability control. Um, GM has been one of the leaders for Stabilitrack. I mean, and, and if you listen to other people about other vehicles, they're going to talk about Stabilitrack. But ours is actually one of the biggest and longest time running, and it is called Stabilitrack. And um, basically what that does and there's a lot that goes into it, but I'm going to give you the short version. If you go into a bend in the rear end of the truck and or one of the SUVs, the rear end starts to slide out a little bit due to pea gravel, due to ice, due to snow. The truck will actually try to get you back in the direction that you were going. It's done by yaw sensors and this and that and braking one wheel and power to the other wheel. But basically it helps you and gets you into that safe position again where you need to be. And GM has been a leader with that for a long, long time. Um, a lot of people just don't know what Stabilitrack is. I'll tell them that's the Stabilitrack button and they're like, oh, what's that? You know, so I wanted to kind of hit on that. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things I, I kind of want to hit it on, hit on too was um, as, you, as you start to come in to buy new vehicles, you're going to, we already know the CD players are kind of gone, you know, um, mm -hmm. For us that's been around for a while, we know the cassettes are gone. Now the CDs are gone. Uh, people were playing music off of their um, um, USBs you could plug in. But now these vehicles all have uh, Apple CarPlay and or Android AutoPlay. And a lot of people talk about the, um, the Apple CarPlay or the Android AutoPlay and say, hey, it's a great thing, you know, as far as your music and everything. But it goes a lot further in that. And, and one of the great features are... If you have Waze downloaded into your phone or Google Maps or Apple Maps, all of that will come right up. You plug your phone in and it goes right up into your stereo um, and your screen up there. But one of the things that gets kind of lost in the shuffle, which I like is, and, and I'm not proud to say this, but I do text every once in a while when I'm driving. I know we all do, um, but it is hands-free texting. 
So oh, wow. the text comes across, you just hit it or read it. And then it'll ask you if you want to reply. You say yes. It'll say, what do you want to say? And, you know, and, and it'll just keep going back and forth and it's hands free. So that's one of the things that kind of gets lost in the, in the uh, technology part of the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto. And as new apps are being created, they are trying to, the, the um, engineers, I guess for a better word, or app developers are trying to make these apps, are making them uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto Play so they can work with them. So, you know, um, it's a great, great system. But with that said, uh, that's where I wanted to kind of lead back to that CD stuff is you're going to probably start seeing the navigation kind of go away in these cars because everybody will be using the Apple CarPlay and or the uh, Android Auto. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions on the on the Canyon Denali there? I'll say we'll give um, the viewers some time to send some in. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to hit something real quick then. The other thing that that's new to the GM family is the cattle or the cattle. Sorry, is the <laughs> uh, GMC uh, AT4. So there's an AT4 in the Sierras, but there's also an AT4 in the Canyon. And basically, it's a rugged looking truck, but it's still a refined truck. And one of the things they do to set it apart a little bit is a 31 inch uh, Goodyear door track tire on there, which really makes, as you can see, the tires uh, with the 19 inch rim, or I'm sorry, 17 inch rim. And um, they also offer a uh, AT4 off-road performance package with that. And then with that, it's going to give you a one inch leveling suspension with it. It's going to give you the mid skid plates underneath. So if you do take it off road and the front skid plates, it's going to give you a unique 17 inch uh, gloss black wheel and uh, the carbon AT4 logos. So it's more of a rugged look. Um, um, the actual AT4 itself is not um, any higher than the other canyons unless you go with the AT4 off-road performance package. And then basically what it does is just gives you that one inch leveling, kind of levels it off a little bit. So they're they're going in a, you know, a, a direction where, because a lot of people were looking for these lifted trucks or the, at least the appearance of a lifted truck. And I think the GMC brand really came back strong back into the segment with the Canyon and then the producer, the Denali, and then the AT4 right behind it. Yeah, there's the black smoked out grill, as you just seen mm -hmm. in the surround and, and just a sharp, sharp truck, especially in the black. The slow-mo snowflakes are cracking. It's such an intense video. Yes. <laughs> we'll give everyone some more time. Um, I think that is... I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll say, I think that is a big question as people ask, you know, what's the difference between the Canyon and the Canyon AT4? Um, are there any other big differences? No, because basically everything you can get in the Denali as far as feature wise, you can basically get into the AT4. So it's more of an appearance um, with those 31 inch tires, you know, with the rugged look on them. Uh, and, and like I use the saying, you know, the uh, rugged, and refined where the, where the Denali is just more refined, mm -hmm. um, but it has its own interior to it, leather interior, you know, and then, like I said, instead of the grill being the, the uh, Denali grill, it's going to give you a black surround with a black grill and the special tires and then the um, different running boards where the Denali is still going to give you a little bit more of that chrome look, a little more defined, defined look. And the other one other quick little thing I don't know if anybody's touched on yet, but I'm going to hit this real quick is, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about warranties out there and you really have to dig into a lot of other brands warranties because, um, you know, there's some sticklers to it, I guess, for a better word. But um, the one great thing about GMC and it's always been, you know, you get a three year, 36,000 mile, three year or 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty or five year, 60,000 on the powertrain. So anything internally lubed on the um, engine transmission drivetrain is covered for five years, 60,000. And then basically your whole truck's covered except for wearable parts for the three or 36,000 miles. Um, they do come with the OnStar for 30 days, which um, a lot of us all know about the OnStar uh, now, which is a, a great feature if you're traveling alone or by yourself and God forbid something happens, you know, the, the police, the fire are all going to be alerted. Mm-hmm. I'll say that, that's a great thing to know, especially 
you know, with trucks, some people can be rough. Like it's great to know what the warranties are and stuff yeah. like that when you're purchasing it. Yeah. The, the corner bumper there where they're showing right now is actually where you can put your foot, step back up where um, before you'd have to step clear up to the top of the bumper or climb up on the tailgate to get into the bed where there you can actually put your foot right there, grab one of the holes up on top of the bed rail and get right into the truck. So it makes it a little easier to get up there and get, uh, you know, your coolers out of there, you know, whatever you might have in there, digging out some gravel or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, this might be a good time. We can pop Dylan back in and he can okay. let us know if there's any current offers going on with the Canyon. Yeah. And I just want to thank everybody for coming out today. And if you have any questions, you know, shoot them to us and we will definitely get back to everywhere. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you. Hi, Dylan. Hey, Tay. How you doing? Oh, better now. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything, uh, any offers that we got going for the yeah, Canyon? Yeah, we're getting started here. Uh, you know, Canyon's nice truck, um, you know, baby brother Sierra, but you're getting ready to look at what is definitely the coolest brand of cars that Smale has to offer without a doubt. That's why we all drive them, including myself. Uh, okay. But on the Canyon right now, they are as well as uh, just about everything else that GMC has to offer. Uh, we are offering 0% up to 72 months. There's an available uh, available 1550 in rebate on every Canyon in inventory. Um, so like I said, 0% came out pretty strong with every manufacturer after uh, everybody came back from the COVID lockdown. But GM is one of the brands that's still sticking to it, still offering it, and still uh, trying to help people out and save them. Nothing better than borrowing the bank's money for free. So why not take advantage? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's a great offer people can take advantage of right now on the Canyon. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. We'll grab you again after the next one. All right. Um, so Dan, uh, what are you most excited for? What do you think our next vehicle should be? Well, I think we should take a look at the uh, GMC terrain that we have there. I used to drive the terrain, so I'm a fan of it. Yeah, it's a real popular vehicle, and luckily uh, we just got in a shipment of um, 21 Terrains recently, so we're fully stocked up and ready to sell them. Uh, but if you take a look at the front there, first thing you're going to notice is the massive grill with the GMC logo on there. I believe it puts a massive statement on what kind of vehicle it presents. Mm -hmm. um, also, to the left and to the right, you're going to notice that C-shaped style uh, signature headlight display. Um, it seems to be a new design that GMC is going with, um, incorporating them into most of their vehicles. Um, if we want to actually head over to the driver's side of the vehicle um, on the door there, we will talk about um, some of the features and benefits that are part of the uh, SLT terrain. Um, if we just want to open up the door there. And if you look to the top of the door handle there, you'll notice that we have some memory seating options. Um, so that's super convenient to where you're gonna be able to save both your presets um, for both uh, one and two drivers. Uh, so that way you don't have to mess with um, messing around with the seating options again. Um, if you look a little bit down below, you're gonna notice that there is a, um, a little button there with the trunk lid. Uh, super convenient option there to where you're going to be able to lift up the trunk from the inside of the driver's door. No need to get out. Uh, super convenient, uh, especially if you're doing like um, uh, Walmart uh, grocery options to where they're going to deliver the groceries to your vehicle. No need to get out anymore. You can just sit in your driver's seat. No need to get out into the cold. Hit that button. Trunk's going to open up all by itself. Um, you can load up your groceries and you can hit that button again. and It's going to shut it uh, by itself as well. There's a three quarters option, which is super convenient. So if you have a low hanging garage, you can actually customize um, how high the trunk lid's gonna open. So that way you don't have to worry about smacking on the roof of your garage or anything like that. So I think that's super convenient. Mm -hmm. Even for some of the shorter people, you know? <laughs> yeah, correct, yeah, if it's all the way up there, you don't have to try and jump up and hit the button to reclose it. Again, you can just hit that button right there and it'll close all by itself. Super mm -hmm. nice. Um, GMC, one thing that they're very major on is uh, safety. Um, and on all GMC trains, you're gonna get a load of safety features um, that just come standard in these vehicles. You're gonna get the automatic emergency braking. You're gonna get the forward collision alert lane keep assist, uh, the following distance indicator, which will let you know if you're running up too close behind somebody. Um, 
you're also going to get the pedestrian, uh, forward pedestrian braking. So if somebody, you know, you the good old saying, you know, look both ways before you cross the road. You know, somebody didn't look both ways and they're crossing the street. The vehicle will recognize that somebody is walking out in front of you and will do its very best to stop and, you know, cause some type of, some, <laughs> some type of a serious accident. Mm -hmm. Another big thing is the um, intelligent auto high beams. Um, if you look to the left of the driver's side of the, um, the Lou shifter there, you're going to see that Lou A uh, with the headlight symbol. All you got to do is hit that button and that will indicate that your uh, automatic high beams are on. And what that will do, if there's an oncoming car going the opposite direction, uh, the high beams will actually turn themselves off. And then once the vehicle passes you, they'll automatically turn themselves back on again, which is super convenient. You don't have to worry about blinding somebody that's traveling on the road. I know uh, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sometimes forget about myself. Um, you know, <laughs> driving, next thing you know, I, I was like, oh, crap. I just pie beam somebody and, you know, I kind of feel bad about it. But the vehicle right. will take care of that for you. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look over to the entertainment, uh, the infotainment center there, uh, the big old touch screen, uh, it comes standard with a seven inch diagonal display. Uh, can be upgraded to eight inches, uh, so you get a little bit more of a screen there. Um, just retouching on what Billy said a little bit earlier is that uh, all these vehicles come standard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, you also have the availability to get a Wi-Fi hotspot integrated into the vehicle, and of course, you're going to get OnStar, and that comes free with the OnStar free for uh, 30 days. Um, if we went ahead into the second row there, there we have a moment. I know I heard a little comment kind of about the front, how, you know, the, for park reverse its buttons. Whenever I first got in the train, I remember I thought that, you know, I questioned if it was safer. And then I was told that it's, it is safer because you have to pull them instead of push them and having the gear shift like that is actually a safer option. I don't know if that's, if I was told correct, but I thought right, that was it's definitely a safer option, especially getting rid of the shifter, uh, you know, with us being drivers, our hands are sometimes busy doing other things. Uh, you don't want to accidentally, you know, move the shifter while you're driving. So having them away, you know, towards the front of the vehicle um, is super convenient. And also with, you know, like you're mentioning with the push button and the pull, mm -hmm. you know, you definitely have to, you know, put a little bit more focus into either put it into drive or into reverse. You know, it's not something that you can accidentally do. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that always stuck with me because I think from first impression, people, you know, might not think it is, but it's actually safer. Right. Definitely a unique design. And um, we sold a few of them uh, now and, you know, customers seem to be actually enjoying uh, the new integration. Is leather standard in the terrains? Uh, leather is not standard in all terrains. You do have to get up to at least the SLT model to get to the uh, leather interior there. Uh, with the SLE and the SL, you'll be getting cloth interior. Um, now, what I wanted to talk about in the second row there, as you can see, it's pretty spacious. Um, you can sit easily two people, even three comfortably in the back seat there. Um, one thing you will notice in the center console area there is that you do have the rear vents, um, which a good bit of manufacturers don't incorporate the rear vents into the two road vehicles. Um, well, the second road has to rely on the front air vents to either warm up or cool down that back seat, uh, which could take a while. Uh, so it's nice that they integrated, you know, those rear vents back there. Uh, just let you know that they're thinking about their uh, passengers in the back. And also mm -hmm. you do have the two USB ports uh, right below that. Um, so they can always stay uh, charged and connected to their devices while they're sitting in the back seat, as well as right below that might be a little bit hard to see, but you also have a uh, 110 volt plug-in. Uh, so if you need to uh, hook up like a wireless charging pad or anything like that, um, that will also integrate that as well. For the rear seats, are they 60-40 um, split? Yeah, you do have a 60-40 split in the uh, rear seats there. Uh, makes it super convenient to um, 
lower them down and you know gain access to the uh, rear cargo area. If we, if we want to move it back uh, to the rear cargo, uh, you'll see again the signature display of the LED lights there, uh, that C-shaped. Um, if you also have a power lift gate as well, um, if you want to hit the button there. And it'll open up all by itself. No need to try and lift the heavy lift gate. And if you look at the very top, you'll see that button that will allow you to close it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Uh, so you got a lot of cargo space to begin with. Uh, you could definitely fit a lot of luggage or groceries in the back seat there. If you needed any uh, additional space, if you lift the rear cargo mat up, you will actually see there's a little storage area as well. Oh, wow. And right underneath that storage area is going to be where the spare tire is going to be located at. Now, if you're hauling uh, larger objects, if you look to the right there, you're going to see two levers. If you pull those levers down, uh, it will pull those uh, middle row seats. <laughs> of course, if uh, <laughs> the front seats were sure. up maybe a little bit closer, uh, mm -hmm. they would pull uh, fully flat. Mm -hmm. So then you have a ton of space back there. Loads of space. And if you're actually hauling something maybe even a little bit larger than that space provides, the passenger front seat also folds fully flat. Hey, Dan, just to touch base a little bit, um, Taylor, you were saying about the new shifter. Actually, mm -hmm. one of the other big reasons why they put in that electronic shift with the knobs is to make the cabin quieter. Because they say that the um, when you have the gear shifter in there, that noise actually travels up through there and creates some type of, you know, or not some type, but a small amount of noise. So that's one of the other reasons that they did go with that type of shifting and also to give you more room up there. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Or sorry, go ahead. Uh, one thing that's not displayed on this particular vehicle, but is an available option on the, the GMC terrains is what they call the Elevation Edition, or what's more commonly known as the Blackout Edition, uh, which gives the terrains a more uh, sleeker, more modern look. Uh, you're going to be getting the, uh, the black roof rails. You're going to be getting the black loss wheels, which will come in 19 inch. Uh, the mirror caps will also be blacked out as well as the um, the front grill there will be blacked out as well, as well as the, um, the badging where it says all wheel drive um, and GMC terrain. Awesome. I was gonna say just a quick reminder to our viewers, please feel free to send questions all throughout this. Dan and Bill are here to answer them as they come in. Um, is there any other things we should know about the terrain? Uh, it's just an amazing vehicle, uh, extremely popular. It's family friend friendly. It will fit most families. Um, I, I think it's a phenomenal vehicle. Awesome. We'll um, pull Dylan back in now. We'll ask him if there's any offers currently running on the train. No, I got offers, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> uh, same thing, terrains. Uh, we, we have a bunch of them. Um, that was one of our probably most in stock unit we have um, ranging in all the trim lines, all the colors, everything like that. Uh, we are offering this month uh, low mileage lease for qualified customers, 288 a month with just 288 do it signing, um, as well as up to $3,500 and 0% for 72 months. Like I said, GMC, 0%, 0%, 0%, get it while you can. Um, like I said, we have plenty in stock. Um, Billy and Dan will be happy to help you guys out when you come down. So like I said, take advantage of the money while it's there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So Dan, I know I was wanting to learn about the Acadia more. Do we have one there that we could check out next? Yeah, we should have one there in the showroom. Um, we'll start off on the front there. And first thing you're going to notice is same with the terrain. You're going to have a massive front grill uh, with the GMC logo, you know, very prominent right there up front. Uh, you're going to have the LED headlamps. Um, not the C-shaped signature design that we talked about, but the terrain, but uh, these ones are still going to be LED. Under the hood, you are going to have three different types of engine options. You're going to have the 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, uh, which will come standard with uh, 193 horsepower, 
188 foot pounds of torque. You're gonna have the 2.0 turbo four cylinder, which will have 230 horsepower uh, with 258 foot pounds of torque. And then lastly, which seems to be the most popular is gonna be the, uh, the 3.6 V6 engine that comes standard with 310 horsepower and 271 foot pounds of torque. That's a beautiful color. I know we didn't really touch on that on the terrain. Um, do you know what color that might be, the outside? Uh, that particular color, it, it's hard for me to tell with the glare and the screen here. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the sure. ebony or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we might can be that dark moon. That was a real popular color as well. Mm hmm uh, if we want to head over to the driver's side there, uh, that might be the dark, man. A little bit of blue in there. Yep. Do you know all the colors that it comes in? Oh, you know, I'm actually still new here, and I'm actually still <laughs> trying to learn a good bit of the uh, colors that come with it. So, sorry, I do, I do not. Oh, no, no worries. Uh, so, one thing you'll notice on this one, uh, just like the terrain, you're going to have that button there for the tailgate. Uh, no need to go into too much in detail, but just to let you guys know that it is also available in the Acadia. Um, I did notice, not so much notice, but I did state a few of the safety features that come standard in the terrain. Um, with the Acadia, it being a much larger vehicle, um, GMC uh, decided to make a little bit more features standard. Um, and some of those features are going to be the sideline zone alert, which seems to be one of the more popular option people are looking for. Um, me personally, it's one of those features to where once I have it, it's hard to go back and not have it again. It's just so reliable and so useful to have. Um, you're also going to have front and rear park assist that comes standard. Um, and lastly, you're going to get the rear cross traffic alert as well. Going into the infotainment center, um, one thing that's brand new for GMC this year is that um, we all may be familiar with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, uh, but with the Acadia, no longer do you need a cord to get that connected. It's completely wireless. So once you hook up your Bluetooth, um, you'll be prompted to activate the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay right from the get-go, um, and it'll pop up automatically. No need to be able to have to plug it into the uh, USB port down there in the bottom which is super nice. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're gonna have the same uh, gear shift option, you know, the, uh, the push button or pull button. Uh, so everything's staying completely um, the same there. I'm gonna get a noise. Okay, never mind. Um, if we wanna head into the second row there. Hey Dan, what's that switch I see Brian keep going past every once in a while down there by the console, that round thing there? Oh, yes. Uh, so right there, you're going to have your lane keep assist, uh, that button there with the vehicle with the two lines. Um, that is going to be an option that you can turn on or off because uh, we do know some people do not like and have all, in, all these safety features on. Um, you have that A there with the circle. That's going to be your automatic stop start. Same thing. Uh, some people really enjoy having uh, the engine shut off whenever you're parked at a red light or stop sign. Uh, help and save on fuel and emissions, uh, but there are other people that do not like that feature. So uh, GM did incorporate the option to have that turned off when needed. Uh, the knob in the center there towards the bottom, that is going to be your two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive option. Um, so back in the day, if you did have a four-wheel drive vehicle, it was four-wheel drive all the time. Now you do have the option to switch it back to front-wheel drive when weather conditions aren't bad, uh, which is super convenient. Um, you know, if the weather's nice, you really don't need that four wheel drive to get you that extra traction, which does help save you on tire wear and also fuel mileage as well. I know I said this for the Canyon, but I love those gold or not gold wood accents that they've put in there. It just gives it a little fancy touch. Yeah, it definitely makes the vehicle pop for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to head into the second row there, I just want to show you guys a few things. Uh, first thing you're going to notice is that you do not have a bench seat. You do have the captain chairs option. 
uh, which makes it super convenient whenever you're trying to get into that third row. No longer do you have to fold down the entire bench to crawl into the back and then, you know, having to fold it back down to crawl back out. You can slide mm -hmm. right in between, makes it nice and simple for all your passengers to get in and out of the vehicle. Also, one thing they have, if you uh, look at the uh, top of the vehicle there on the roof, on the inside, you'll notice that you'll have air vents um, up there, which makes it a little bit more easier to circulate the air throughout the vehicle. Um, it's blowing right down onto your passengers and take, helps warm or cool down the vehicle a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, towards the back of the center console there, you're going to have two USB ports as well just to help keep your passengers connected and charged up while they're on the drive. Mind if I jump in real quick, Dan? Sure, absolutely. Um, a couple, give you a little break because you've been going on pretty good. Um, I'll let, let you get right back to it. Two, two real nice, neat features too about the Acadia. Um, and Dan probably was going to hit this. I'm kind of still in his thunder on one, but one just hit me as, as I was thinking about that is the two seats actually underneath the seat you got your storage there, Brian. Yeah, nice catching that. Um, the two seats, actually, if you reach between your legs, you can slide that second row seat back and forth, which makes our Acadia one of the nice, um, one of the nicer SUVs in the market because you can actually put full size adults in that third row seat and they have plenty of leg room because you can split the difference a little bit. So that right. seat will travel back and forth. Um, one of the other issues that probably two years ago was if you have a car seat um, in a vehicle, you'd always have to take the car seat out to try to get back there if you had to use that seat to get into the third row. That seat behind the passenger, Brian, and I don't think you're going to be able to demonstrate this, but up by the headrest, there's a lever. And when you pull that lever, the whole seat actually goes forward towards the front seat. Which So basically what I'm telling you is you can keep the car seat there and keep it intact. You don't have to take it out to get into that back third row seat, um, even if you more so if you had the bench seat instead of the buckets. Yeah, mm -hmm. see up by the top, Brian, if you can grab that and pull it if you can and just kind of pull it. Yep. And if you get back a little bit now, you can see that the car seat could have stayed there and you do not have to take it out, but still can get in to that third row. Um, so another great feature, especially for the moms and the single dad or not single, <laughs> the moms and the dads that are out by themselves, you know, with the kids, they don't have to worry about doing that. Um, they can leave that car seat in there. I say for a second row, that just looks so spacious and comfortable. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, what's well, great. And that's what the seat, I look, it appears that it's all the way back and you can still get a person back there. But when you can pull that seat back and forth and split the difference a little bit, and I'm not saying you're going to go from here to Florida, but you could definitely do a two, three, four hour drive back there as a full size adult where mm -hmm. a lot of the other SUVs, you're really cramped back there. Right. So um, this, that material, does it come in leather as well? The seats. Good, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can get leather options whenever you get up to the SLT, AT4, or the Denali option is when you can get leather. Correct. Uh, a few things I wanted to show in the um, in the cargo area, if we can. Okay, there is a little echo. So first thing you're going to see on the uh, the tail lights there is. Sorry, I, I'll continue, no problem. Uh, so you do have that area there for storage. Um, if you look under the cargo liner area, uh, there, if you lift that up, same as the train, you're gonna have a little bit of storage underneath there as well. And then underneath there is where you're gonna have your spare tire or your inflator kit. Mm -hmm. Now that's pretty bolted down there. Um, in order to release the third row, you see those drawstrings there, all you got to do is pull and push, um, and they'll lower down. And that just really opens it up. Correct. And then same as the terrain, if you want to lower down the, uh, the second row options, there will be two levers on the left-hand side. Um, and those will also lower down the two captain's chairs as well, just to open up the vehicle even more. Mm-hmm. Nice. Wow, 
yeah. nice flat surface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's what I wanted to show there in the back of the vehicle. Um, also, as well as with the terrain, uh, the Acadia um, also has the elevation addition as an option as well for those who like that blacked out look with the black wheels um, and the black lettering and the black GMC logos. Uh, that's most certainly an option on the Acadia as well. We'll give some of our viewers some time to get in some more comments or questions did was there anything else that we should know about the acadia uh, that's everything i have on it for today unless billy you have anything you wish to add in uh no i mean you hit the power adjustable and it, the, the tailgate on that is also hands-free i think you hit on the train but um i don't know if you can see the no that's an sle but there could there be logos underneath again where you, um, if somebody was coming up with groceries and or their hands full can put their foot underneath the um, the rear bumper there and pull it back, and then that'll open and close by doing that. Um, the Acadia obviously is a it, it, it's either a six or a seven passenger. So mm -hmm. if you do the buckets, it's a six passenger. You do the bench, it's seven passenger. Where the train is strictly a five passenger. So it just kind of depends on where your family fits into there, you know. And some people only have a smaller family, but like the Acadia because they won't use the third row, um, but they can throw softball bats back there and soccer stuff and you know that type of stuff. Um, but have it so if they need that third row for um, some of the kids, friends, or whatever, they mm -hmm. have it. So they they they're each kind of in their own segment, but they kind of still cross over with each other. And um, GMC is just that professional grade. It's it's just a great car. I mean, I'm very proud to be selling it. I've been here, you know, starting my 19th year. So I love the the brand, and and I'm excited about it. I again, like Dylan said, I drive it. Um, and one thing I just want to hit real quick, and, and I know I'm kind of out of place and Taylor probably gonna get mad at me, but, and, or maybe Dylan is <laughs> the, the one thing is in, in the, in the past, you know, when Dylan talks about the 0% and the rebate, it was always either or either or. Okay. Then maybe a year ago they said, okay, we'll give you 0% and maybe give you a little small rebate, a $500 rebate. The rebates that Dylan are talking about in the 0%, just to make it clear, are in conjunction with each other. So you're getting both of them, um, which typically does not happen in the car industry as long as I've been doing it. Yeah. Um, and on the train, it's it's a pretty high rebate with the 0%, uh, 2250, don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure. And then on the Acadia, it's also a pretty a pretty high rebate with the 0%. So that, that's the key thing you remember. Usually it doesn't happen together. And for at least this month, it is happening together. So it is a very, very good, good time to come out and, and look at the GMC products. I was going to say, we'll go ahead and we'll grab Dylan and we'll find out exactly what they right, are. Buddy. Thanks for stealing my thunder, Billy. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking it and I don't want to forget about it. Uh, we, All we, right. touched on, uh, we touched on a little bit yesterday when we did the Buick. Uh, like I said, same thing. Uh, you, you don't get them hand in hand. Uh, no. said Billy's been with GM. We're almost 20 years I've been doing this for almost 10 years you never see them hand in hand so uh, like I said take advantage of it because you never know when they're going to change their minds or if somebody was sleeping on the switch they might wake up and be like what the heck have we been doing uh, but on the Acadia uh, same thing um, low mileage lease 36 months uh, 389 or 386 down 386 a month I mean for that car for a seven row or seven passenger SUV all wheel drive it's not uh, it's not easy to come by um, and then same thing on a purchase together up to $2,800 or 0% for 72. It's so like I said, we got offers on offers on offers on offers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. We, um, we have a pre recorded video that we did for the Yukon. Um, we can go ahead and throw that up now, give you guys a little break and let our viewers check that out. All right. John Ambrosic here at Smale GMC in Greensburg and today what I'm going to do is take you over a quick recap of some of the new features and new items on the all new redesigned 2021 GMC Yukon Denali. Up front you'll notice that uh, brand new headlights, grill, um, obviously 
distinctive GMC traits. They have the C-shaped headlights. Uh, you have the big in-your-face distinct Denali grille. Uh, if you walk around the back of the Denalis, you're going to see that you have the dual exhaust um, on both sides. So you have the dual tips coming out both sides. Engine choices, you do have the 5.3, uh, which is going to be in your SLE, SLT, and AT4s. Uh, the Denali, you are able to go up to a 6.2. So the 6.2 is going to jump you up from 355 horsepower from the 5.3s up to 420 horsepower. 460 foot pound of torque. Third engine option that they are coming out with for 2021, uh, should be available here shortly, early half of 2021, is going to be the 3 liter Duramax diesel engine that they just introduced into the light duty Sierras last year. Nice open wood, poor finish for all the wood that's on the front, either on the console, doors, along the dashboard. Um, very classy and elegant looking. Heated and ventilated front seats, uh, heated steering wheel, second row heated seats. Previously, before you had the standard sunroof, um, now you're gonna have the panoramic sunroof, uh, which makes a huge difference for the passengers in the back. You have the power folding third row, leg room in the previous Econ, 24 inches of leg room, basically in that third row. It has gone up now to almost 35 inches. So huge difference even now that those seats slide back and forth. Um, but even with those seats back in their fully back position, you still have 10 inches more room than you did previously. Uh, when you go into the XL, the XL third row leg room, you gained about two and a half to three inches. If you uh, get the infotainment system in the rear seat, uh, you do have the huge 12 and a half inch screens back there that are mounted to the backs of both of the front seats. Uh, so those rear passengers in the second row. Um, nice, everything is touchscreen. If you have an Amazon Fire Stick or a Roku, uh, any type of streaming device that you can use, you can actually now plug those into the HDMI ports. If you're interested in a walk around video and a test drive that we did on the 2021 Yukon, we're gonna put a link below on this video, uh, you can click on that and check that out also. Otherwise, you can have any questions, you want to come in and take a look at anything that we have in our inventory, you can either stop down and see us right off of Route 30 in Greensburg, or you can check us out on the web at smailgmc.com. I was going to say, that was a great video that John did. Did a good job. Yeah, he did. Um, one thing I think everyone's kind of curious on that I thought we could maybe just briefly touch on is the talks of the Hummer that's coming back. Yeah. Is there anything exciting with that? Anything that we know? Sure thing. So with the uh, Hummer EV, uh, it's going to be General Motors' first fully electric vehicle. Um, good news for us is that they're built right here in the United States of America in Detroit, Michigan. The only way currently that you can uh, acquire one yourself is by going to gmc.com forward slash Hummer EV. Uh, currently right now, the Hummer EV first edition, which is the top of the line, uh, most luxurious model is currently sold out. Um, they've actually been sold out within the first 10 minutes since October, I think it was 22nd, whenever they first released the reservations sold out in 10 minutes. So they're a high demand vehicle. Everybody's excited for them. Uh, they do have three other trim models that you can choose from. First one being the Hummer EV2. That will be released in spring of 2024. It's gonna have two motor electric motors in it. Estimated to be around 250 miles um, for a full charge. You're gonna get 625 horsepower, 7,400 foot pounds of torque. The, wow. uh, the second trim level is going to be the Hummer EV2. That's going to be released around spring 2023. That as well has two electric motors. Estimated mileage is going to be around 300. Um, that as well is going to have 625 horsepower with 7,400 foot-pounds of torque. And the only other model that's available currently that's still up for reservation is going to be the Hummer EV3X. That will be released sometime 
fall of next year, 2022. That's going to have three electric motors uh, with a range of around 300 miles. It's going to have 800 horsepower with 9,500 foot-pounds of torque. And then the last one, which currently is already reserved out, is going to be the Hummer EV Edition 1. Uh, that's going to be released fall this year. Um, it's going to have three electric motors with a range uh, topped out of 350 miles. Uh, you're going to be able to do zero to 60 in under three seconds. Oh, wow. uh, it's going to have 1,000 horsepower with 11,500 foot-pounds of torque. Wow. I was like, what a beautiful vehicle. How the, <laughs> the top comes off. And I'm so yeah, definitely for over the top. Yeah. So throughout uh, the, cool thing with the, uh, the tops coming off there is that they are separated into four different segments. Um, and a lot of questions I got from people that are reserved them is where am I going to be putting those, uh, those glass roof? Uh, General Motors already thought of a solution for that. And in the front trunk, uh, as dubbed as the frunk, um, will perfectly <laughs> fit all four of those corner panels for the roof. So that way you don't have to take them off and be like, oh, where, where am I going to put these? You can put them right in the frunk and it's already taken care of. I like that frunk. <laughs> yeah. Anything else that we can look forward to with the Hummer? It's gonna we're gonna see it this year, and if you want it, you need to reserve it now, or you know, start getting in contact for it. Well, the the one that's coming out that we'll well hopefully one that maybe we'll see here it smells, um, like Dan was saying, those are already spoken for. So the, the mm -hmm. big top model are the ones that are already booked, and they got booked. Am I correct in that, Dan? Correct. That's yeah, that would be the Hummer yeah. EV edition. So it, it, it's it's just going to be a one of them things. Um, with all uh, GM, and if you haven't seen the Will Ferrell commercial with the Cadillac brand, I mean GM and Hull is moving into that electric um car and SUV, eventually trucks and everything moving that way. So this is going to be the kind of the first one, but the e, the EV edition of number one, it will be the one coming first. Um, but like, like Dan said, it is already bought. You, you can't find one. They're already all spoken for. So we're hoping that second one fall or spring of next year, I think it is, um, you know, hopefully we'll get to see, it, it's just going to be one of them kind of things where for now, you're not going to probably see a whole bunch of them until they, you know, make sure that they're doing them right. They want, they want to roll out right. Right. They want to do, you know, um, but definitely moving in the electric world here on, I should say, unfortunately, maybe not unfortunately, mm -hmm. but we're definitely all moving into the electric uh, SUVs and cars. Well, sorry, go ahead. One last thing I have I wanted to hit, and and I don't know if anybody's hit it yet. I'm I, I'm sure maybe Johnny or or Nick hit it, but in the GM version is um, with uh, the adaptive cruise control because um, I do get a lot of questions. What is adaptive cruise control? Adaptive cruise control, and a lot of these cars we spoke about today have that. Um, and it really goes in hand in hand with the, um, Dan with the super cruise, oh, um, on the Cadillac, <laughs> which will be coming the super, if they didn't talk about that yesterday, the super cruise on the Cadillacs, which will basically let you drive without any hands mm -hmm. will be coming to some of the GM products sooner than you think. And basically first will be the trucks, <laughs> but okay. after cruise control, basically you set your cruise. And then in the past, when you're on um, the highway and you got cruise on, and if that guy's in front of you, start, go, start, go. And then you're hitting the brakes then you're hitting resume. <laughs> What that does is, so if the car in front of you starts to slow down, your car will slow down. You set the gap if you wanted a closer gap, medium gap, or a further gap. And then if he, he or she starts to slow down, your vehicle will slow down. They take off a little bit, your car will take off. Now, if they take off to 80 miles an hour and you set your cruise at 65, you're going to stop at 65, obviously. But what it does, it keeps that from you have to keep messing with the cruise control, taking your eyes off the road and, you know, try to do more things safe again. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that adaptive cruise control is just kind of the first thing when we knew the super cruise was coming because those things are all tied in together. The lane departure, forward collision alert, um, the adaptive cruise, you know, so it's going to be a very interesting uh, driving world here in the next, you know, definitely now, but in the next five, I'd say years, seven, eight years, it's going to get a little crazy. The Jetsons. Mm -hmm. Yep, a lot of changes. We watched when we yeah. was little, and we're thinking, Poof, nah, you know, yeah. like the Dick Tracy watches. But now, what you know, so 
It's mm -hmm. coming. It's yep. Coming. We're going to go ahead and we're going to bring Dave in. We're going to ask him a service question. Hi, Dave. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Boy, I I love it. Beautiful cars. Uh, GMC is an uh, amazing product. Uh, amazing product. Uh, customers love them. Super reliable. Um, tons of accessories for them. They're one of the most accessorized vehicles there is. I think you can go on a website, accessories.gmc.com. You can actually shop for accessories. They'll ship them right to us. You'll pay it all there. You'll come in, get it installed. Pretty neat stuff. Pretty neat stuff. So, yeah. so when you do buy your GMC, you'll come down to uh, come down to our shop for your first maintenance visit. Um, you'll come right up to our garage doors. You'll be uh, open right up. You'll be greeted by one of our um, our professionals that know your vehicle probably better than you do sometimes. And we have certified technicians to work on your cars at all times. Um, we try to make the uh, make the service experience very stress free. We offer uh, shuttle service. We offer pickup and delivery. We have after hours uh, drops. Um, we have a, a lounge that's pr uh, pretty comfortable, big screen TV. Uh, uh, we, we'll, we'll take you wherever you want to go. You know, you want to go up the street to the casino, up to uh, to get some food. We'll do that for you. So try to make it as stress free as possible. And uh, we hope to come see you. And to take a look at those accessories for those GMCs, because then you make it your own truck, your own car. It's beautiful, beautiful cars. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Dave. Uh, no problem. Um, I don't know. I don't think we have any more comments really coming in. Um, if anyone has anything they want to say before we wrap it up, any last words? Or? We're all good. Come on down, see us. See the offer, see the cars, see Dan, see Billy, and let's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank, you everyone, thank you, everyone, for joining the 2021 Smale GMC Virtual Auto Show. We hope to see you soon.